With Disney now determined to finally improve and revamp Epcot, we'll get into all of the latest surrounding the rumours of the new additions coming to that park up next. Hi there, Walterners. I'm Jack. This is DSMI Newscast, and yes, it's December, so now we've got some Christmas decorations up, and now let's just jump right into it. So we all know that Disney's Hollywood Studios has been the main focus of a lot, and I really do mean a lot, of development projects by Disney in the last couple of years. But with these new lands and attractions beginning to open as early as next year and then the year after, Walt Disney World are going to be turning their attention and focus towards Epcot in a major way. Now, previously on DSMI Newscast, we've discussed the inclusion of movie franchises within the World Showcase. But it's now being said by inside sources who are familiar with the matter that two new attractions or revamps of current attractions are currently greenlit and are going to be going ahead. The first one probably isn't much of a surprise, as with the recent critic and box office success of Pixar's Day of the Dead inspired Coco, this project has apparently now moved from the category of if only the box office receives it well, to now a full green lighting for a re-theming of the current attraction of the Grand Fiesta Tour, which will be similar to what we saw in the Norway Pavilion with the Maelstrom being transformed into Frozen Ever After. Now of course, in the news of this green lighting of the attraction, there are many different things which need to be considered, such as the current queue area for the Grand Fiesta Tour is relatively small compared to what a more popular attraction would require, so Disney may be looking to rework the pavilion slightly to accommodate for a slightly larger queue. But insiders are also stating that the attraction will most likely close in late 2018, with a targeted reopening date for the new revamped attraction to be 2020. But we might start to see some smaller Coco inspired changes to the inside of the pavilion before then. And that's not the only news regarding new attractions that are rumoured to be coming to World Showcase as apparently a small C or D ticket attraction that's been rumoured to be coming to the UK pavilion has also been greenlit at the same time. However, it's currently being stated that Mary Poppins is not the final contender for the new attraction, but instead something entirely different, with hints to it possibly being something related to Brave and Merida. But the current rumoured timescale indicates that it wouldn't open until at least 2021. Now let's come back to a rumour that we talked about way back at the end of October here on DSMI newscast, as it's now starting to be picked up by other news sites. As it was first reported by insiders in the WDW Magic forums, that as part of the massive Epcot renovation plans, Disney are considering constructing a hotel near the entrance of the park, with the two locations that are most likely being this area here, near the back of the Seas Pavilion, or the other top contender is right in front of the entrance plaza to the park itself, with it currently being rumoured that the monorail station will be incorporated into the plans for the hotel, with this new hotel being similar in design to how the guests walk under the Disneyland Hotel to enter the Disneyland Park park in Disneyland Paris. And so, now let's move on to the ongoing discussions between the Walt Disney Company and 21st Century Fox, as it's been reported by the Wall Street Journal that these two companies are back in negotiation once again. And this time it seems that the talks are gaining momentum and moving in a positive direction. Now as part of all of this, it's really important to understand what Disney might be acquiring as part of this Fox deal as the Wall Street Journal are reporting that it would be the entire 20th Century Fox movie catalogue, along with the Fox Network TV channels such as Fox and FX, and they would also gain control of a 39% holding in Sky, which is a TV and media service provider in the UK. But the important thing to take away from all of this is that Disney won't be taking ownership of Fox News or any of the sports channels that Fox currently owns. Now in cases like this, we won't hear much about this deal until everything is officially wrapped up. But if Disney does acquire 20th Century Fox, this does expand the realm of possibilities for the Marvel Cinematic Universe quite dramatically, and means that they'll be one step closer to owning every piece of the Marvel puzzle. And so, lastly for today, it's being reported by Entertainment Weekly 
that Disney are apparently deciding to stop running the holiday short Olaf's Frozen Adventure with Pixar's Coco, but instead Disney have asked cineplexes and movie theatres to try and accommodate an additional screening of Coco during the daytime. But if you look into it, there is a sound strategy for why Disney did couple these two movies together, as Coco had a relatively short runtime in comparison to other Pixar movies, and so instead of forcing the team behind the movie of Coco to add another half an hour to the movie and potentially damage the story, they decided to run a 20 minute short with the movie to provide a longer runtime. But it seems that the great word of mouth that Coco is currently receiving is really powering it at the box office, and it didn't need the box office might of Frozen after all. But now, it's over to you Walton is. I would like to know your opinions and thoughts on this hotel that's rumoured to be coming to the front of the Epcot Park. And also, whilst you're at it, I'd also like to know whether you like the idea of Brave coming to the UK Pavilion, and if you don't like it, what different Disney movie franchise would you put within the UK Pavilion, and describe what type of attraction it would be that would be realistically integrated within the UK Pavilion. And of course, don't forget to put the timestamp of where the Hidden Mickey appears somewhere within this video, along with your suggestion or your opinion, to be in with a chance to win a DSMY newscast pin, and congratulations to this Walton here, Mr. Wendy Bird, for winning with this suggestion from a previous video. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to very quickly say a massive thank you to all of you who have either offered your support on the previous video, talking all about DSMY newscast and Patreon, or to you early adopters on Patreon. It's a massive help to keep this channel not only going, but also expanding and growing in the future. So for that, thank you. And I guess it wouldn't be a DSMY newscast without saying, if you've liked this video, give it a massive thumbs up. And I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon. Thank <laughs> you.